You know, most countries that consider themselves to be free and just societies, they also consider that uh, freedom of the press is important and that banning the press is only what uh, totalitarian nations do. But, but my question is, like, why is it wrong, though? Like, wh why is it wrong to tell a newspaper that they're not allowed to print something, but for some reason it's okay to tell Facebook, TikTok, or Twitter that they should ban an account? So, so, like, if you want to address the public, you should do it on a newspaper, but you shouldn't do it on Facebook. And by the way, th this is about legal things, right? Like, we're not talking about someone that's posting illegal stuff. No, no, no. Like, someone that operates under the guise of the law and, and is expressing legal opinions, for some reason, it's fine if the government demands that Twitter takes down the account. And we saw this with the Twitter files. Because, like, 15 years ago, I would have never thought this to be true. I would have never thought that democratic nations that champion liberty and human rights would, would have their government concerned with cracking down on private citizens. But, but after the Twitter files and, and after what we saw that what's happening with Brazil, where you have a judge of the Supreme Court, which was asking Elon Musk to censor politicians and journalists and, and not only to censor them, but to also make it seem as if it's Twitter doing it. Right, as if those journalists are violating the TOS of the private company that can do whatever it wants, and it's not on the behest of the judicial arm of Brazil. And again, you gotta wonder, like, what what other countries are doing it? You gotta wonder. Uh, besides Twitter, are the other platforms receptive to it? And apparently, they are. Like Australia uh, had the, one of its politicians or, or one of its uh, bureaucrats come up and basically say how. Um, yeah, like Facebook and YouTube and, and all the other platforms comply to our demands for censorship. It's just X that didn't. Like, why is it so hard for X to do it? And it's because they have different principles. And by the way, X is not a bastion for free speech, mind you. But it's still better than the others, it seems. So anyway, this was uh, posted by an account called Fentazil on Twitter. And allegedly, it talks about the number of accounts officially requested for removal by governments who went to TikTok and said, remove that, right? So, like, how many times... Look at this shit. Like, if this is true, Australia had to remove 1,532 accounts. Were they really that inconveniencing the government? Were they really that big of a problem? I do have to mention that it lacks a little bit of context here, right? It's, it's not really fair to put Australia number one because China isn't represented. If I'm not mistaken, TikTok is unironically banned in China, like, in, on the mainland. They, they can't access it unless they have VPN. So it, it would make sense why China isn't on the graph. But like Australia, right? A democratic nation. New Zealand. I mean, I, I can get Israel, right? Due to the conflict that, that they're in. Like there's a lot of uh, violent terrorism that goes on in that nation. So so maybe I kind of kind of see it, you know? But like Australia... Is Australia like such a violent place that they require people to be silenced online? UK, Germany, I mean, this doesn't surprise me, given their history. Look, look how low Russia is. Man, you know, I, I, I will say this. I am starting to have more respect for the Soviet Union and the Iron Curtain, like under communism. Like, the, the reason is at least they were brutally honest about who they are. Like, yeah, we're, we're a dictatorship. If you try to leave the country, if you try to escape to the West, we will hurt you. If you say things that are anti-revolutionary, we will lock you up. Like, like they were honest about it, right? They weren't LARPing as, oh, yeah, we're a free society. We're a free, open society. You know, you got all the liberties and we care about human rights. It's just that we're going to censor you if you speak against politicians on TikTok. And this is after the pandemic, right? It's like uh, 2022. Uh, it, it caught a little bit of the pandemic, didn't it? It's like there, there was still a little bit more to be censored on social media. Can you imagine like the statistics that would have been from 2020 to 2022? Oh, Dios mio. Uh, I, I remember like this was actually, because again, like why am I willing to believe this, right? Because I usually just don't pick up any random chart from the internet and believe it to be true. Um, but the reason I believe this, I remember there was a scandal in the UK during the pandemic Apparently, they had a uh, censorship cabinet. I don't know what they called it exactly, but it's what it did. And the reason that I even know about it is that Labour was freaking out that the Conservatives want to shut it down. And the Conservatives were like, oh, no, 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 actually, no, we're not shutting it down. Now, the problem with it 
is that it happened behind closed doors. Like, you wouldn't know that the government is requiring the social media company to censor you. You wouldn't have any ways to appeal. You wouldn't have any ways to defend yourself. You wouldn't have any ways to, to go against the person censoring. No, it, like, all of a sudden, oh, your account has been terminated. TOS violations. And again, like, during the Twitter files, we know this to be true. So, it is surprising that most of the nation that are dictatorships and they're, they're harsh places to live in and they don't really have democracy or they're pretending to be democratic, that they're really low on the list. Really low on the list. Uh, meanwhile, nations that are, oh, so democratic, so open society, they, they champion human rights this and human rights that. They're on top of the list. How can we even have a democracy if people aren't allowed to express themselves in the public? Like, they, they're not allowed to talk to the public. They're not allowed to discuss things. Again, like, like take into account that you see num uh, th this number being low. It's like 1,532 people. Yeah, they don't ban accounts that are small. Like, you can go on social media, and as long as you're not blatantly violating the TOS, you can say pretty much whatever you want when you're a small account. They don't care about you. But, but if you start actually becoming popular, like you start getting a million followers, uh, then they start caring. So they usually like go after the big ones unless they have like a campaign to, to like ban everyone that does something. Um, they used to have a campaign like that. I think it was with MGTOW on, on YouTube. Like e everyone that was promoting this, like they, they got banned overnight. Um, so, so like they sometimes have some campaigns where they just want to remove an ideology from the platform. Um, and, and you can get caught into that if you're a small account. But usually the way it works is like they wait for an account to grow, and when the account is, is kind of big, then they go after it. And yeah, like we, we saw journalists getting deplatformed. We saw politicians getting deplatformed. Uh, we, we saw influencers and, and other public people getting deplatformed. I mean, before it was unthinkable. Be before tw uh, 2016, the idea of like a sitting politician in the West having his account banned, I mean, they did that to Donald Trump, right? Like, Donald Trump got banned from all the platforms. And that happened while he was still in office. So, like, even if the president of the U.S. can get banned by these platforms due to political reasons, why should we expect that journalists or, or just random citizens can't get banned as well? And the interesting thing is that there's no outcry over this. Like, it's so normalized that people are looking at this and they're like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's social media, right? Like, it, it's supposed to. And, and, and the issue is that the opposition gets to speak untethered, right? Uh, and, and it's not left-leaning versus right-leaning. A lot of people make this uh, bizarre claim that, oh, if you're a leftist, you don't get banned on social media. If you're a right-winger, you do. Uh, it's populist versus establishment. So even if you're a leftist, if you're a populist, you can still get banned. Like, there were a lot of leftist groups on Facebook that were anti-war, and they got banned. So it, does, it doesn't really matter if you're left-leaning or right-leaning. All that it matters is, like, are you a populist or are you pro-establishment? If you're pro-establishment, you get boosted. You get boosted, you can have, like, there were influencers that the White House did deals and business with them in order for them to promote White House talking points, and they, they got boosted by the algorithm. Uh, however, there were also doctors and scientists that disagreed with uh, government policies over the pandemic. And even though what they showed turned out to be true, they still got banned. So it really depends, right? Like, it, are you for the government or against? This is what the censorship is about. Like, it's, it's not about to benefit the average Joe. The government isn't going to spend so much money and resources to benefit, like, the random people. No, it's to benefit the people in power. The, the, the one thing that people in power fear the most is losing their seats. They don't want to lose their seats. And the way they can lose their seats is if they get voted out. Like the individual, the politician. I, I don't know why some people don't believe in this, but it's true. Like if you're a sitting politician, you have a very comfortable life. It's not just about like uh, being able to get paid from the taxpayer while doing very little and having a group of aides that do pretty much everything for you. It's not, it's not just about that. It's also about the networking and the social connections. And in some cases, dare I say, the insider trading. They, they do not enjoy the idea that, that they can be voted out. And they can be voted out. So, so they're terrified by this. And this is why they need, oh, this journalist is, is rallying people to vote against me or to vote for my opposition. Well, can we get him banned from TikTok or can we get him banned from other platforms? Again, like this, this only shows for TikTok. Like we, we don't know 
how it looks like for Twitter. We don't know how it looks like for Google, but I assume that there are, right? I mean, Elon Musk says that there are for Twitter. So there, there must be for the other. I mean, the, the Australian, um, I, I even forgot. I think he's like the Ministry of E-Safety or some shit. I, I don't know what title they, they gave him. But it was like this elderly gentleman goes up and it's like, oh, well, uh, we, we can get all the other platforms to, combine by our, to comply by our regulations. Why, why can't we get X? And the thing is, like, you get a country like Australia that, that decides censoring people worldwide. Because that's the issue, right? Like, if you say something, like, if I start covering Australian politics and I become successful and I, I become inconvenient, like, they can request that I get censored even though I'm not an Australian citizen. And not only that, even I, as a non-Australian citizen, if I want to listen to an Australian talk about things... Like Bering, for instance, and Bering gets censored, then I can't listen to him, right? Because he doesn't just get censored in Australia, he gets censored worldwide. So, yeah, I, I do find this disturbing and concerning, but like, what can you do? Let me know what you guys think, though. And as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.